Welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced English Grammar Course. This lesson is on using concrete language. Let's get started. Okay, we begin as always with a brief lesson overview. We're going to ask what is concrete language and why is it important? And we're going to break it down into its component elements. Specificity, sensory details, vivid verbs, and the use of the active voice. And we'll end, as always, with some practice. Okay. What is concrete language? Well, when your teacher tells you to use concrete language, he or she is asking for language that is not abstract. You might remember from the lesson on nouns and basic grammar the difference between abstract and concrete nouns. Well, we'll go over it. Language that is concrete is language that never uses vague words when specific ones will do. Language that uses details grounded in the real world rather than sticking to ideas that exist only in the human mind. Think of concrete language like actual concrete. First, it makes your words stick in the reader's mind, like what concrete does. Then it makes them stay there, firmly attached and rock solid forever. Concrete nouns, as opposed to abstract nouns, concrete nouns are nouns that describe things that can be perceived with the senses, like chair. You can look at a chair. You can touch a chair. You can smell a chair if it's somewhat smelly. You can lick the chair and taste it, although I don't recommend this course of action. If you knock your knuckles against it, you can hear the chair. You can perceive it with your senses. An abstract now would be something like mercy or duty or fear. You, you cannot find an atom of fear in the universe. You can't smell mercy. So it's an abstract now. Concrete language is about chair. The concrete details in the real world. All right, so how do we write with concrete language? Because it's always better than abstract. The first trick is specificity. The first rule of concrete language is specificity. Be specific. Never use a vague word when a specific one is available. The more hard facts you can use and the more precise details you can cite, the clearer your writing will be. So it's kind of bad to say, the weather on the East Coast was somewhat extreme last week. Well, that's nice, but pretty much the only word in that whole sentence that was specific was coast. Maybe weather. Even those are sort of vague. Let's see if we can make it a little more specific. It's good to say New York had very cold weather last week. Okay, at least with cold, we know what kind of extreme weather we're talking about. We're narrowing in on the facts. But even better is a record-breaking blizzard dumped eight feet of snow on New York City last Tuesday. Well, now we've got a blizzard something you can perceive with the senses, a record-breaking blizzard to tell you how big it is. It dumped eight feet of snow, not only perce perceptible with the senses, but measurable, on New York City, so a very specific municipality, last Tuesday, and now we've narrowed down the date. By adding all of those specifics, we've made the sentence much more clear.